I'm going to show you guys how to figure out the exact value for sine of pi over 12, namely sine of 15 degrees. And in this video, I will show you guys how to use the half angle formula for this. In one of my previous videos, I have shown you guys how to use the angle difference formula for it, right? We wrote sine of 15 degrees as sine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees inside, and then break it apart from there, right? But in this case, look at Yes, we don't know 15 degrees too well, but we do know 30 degrees much better, right? And we can write this as sine of 30 degrees over 2, right? Because of course, 30 degrees over 2, it will be 15 degrees. And the reason I want to do this is that we know 30 degrees much better, and also we can use the half angle formula, which it says this is going to be First of all, let me just put on the general formula. It will be plus minus for now. And then we open a big square root. And then inside here, we will have 1 and then minus cosine of whatever this angle is in red. Not the over 2, this one, all right? So it will be 30 degrees. And then all over 2, like this, all right? Well, this is just the general formula. First job is we have to figure out it's either plus or minus. To do so, you have to refer back to the original question. You know this is pi over 12, or if you would like, you can look at this as 15 degrees, right? And we're looking for the sine value for that. And refer back to the x and y coordinate plane. You know 15 degrees is going to be just somewhere right here. So your angle, your terminal side is going to be in the first quadrant. That means the sine value will be positive because the uh, whatever this triangle is, this is going to be positive at y value and also positive hypotenuse, right? So positive sine value, that's get rid of the negative sign. That's what we have to do all the time, right? If the angle and you draw the picture, if it's down below here, you will choose negative value. But once again, this is positive, so yeah. Okay. Let's see what can we do next. So it's positive, so I'm not going to write that down. I will just write down a square root, and then one. Let's figure out cosine of 30 degrees, yeah? How can we do that? Well, draw a triangle on the side real quick. Here is my 30 degrees, right here. And then you know, 30 degrees, 90 degrees, and then 60 degrees, right? Ratio of the sides. This right here will be one, this right here will be square root of three, and this right here will be two. So cosine of 30 degrees, it will be adjacent, which is screw 3, and then over 2, right? Uh, be sure we still have the minus in between. Cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2, and then this is all over this 2 in the denominator like that, okay? Well, as we can see, we have this little fraction instead of a big fraction, so that's a complex fraction instead of a big radical, right? we have to fix the complex fraction situation. And to do so, we can just go ahead, multiply the top and bottom by this two, the denominator of the small fraction. And we will end up having, this is the big square root, and then distribute this, right? One times two is just two, and then this two and that two will cancel each other out, so we just have minus square root of three, and then the bottom is just going to be 2 times 2, which is 4. And now, you see, this is just one fraction instead of a big square root. I know we have a small square root instead of the square root, but this is okay, right? But anyway, when you have a big square root and then your fraction inside, this means, I will show you guys all the steps in this case. It means we have to do square root of the top, which is 2 square root of square root 3, like this, and then over square root of the bottom, which is square root 4. And we're lucky, because square root 4, it's a nice number. It's just a regular 2, right? Therefore, on the bottom, we just have a regular 2. No more square roots on the bottom. However, on the top, we have square root of 2, and then minus square root of 3. So, this will be the result that we'll end up having if you use the half-angle formula for the sine function, all right? And this right here is it. And you may be wondering, this looks so different than the result that we got previously. 
but I will tell you guys they are the same. One way you can verify that is, you can just go ahead and punch this onto your calculator, and you can punch the result that we got previously on the calculator as well. The answer will be the same in the decimal form, so they will be the same. And if you would like, I will show you how we can do them with our calculator in the next video. But anyway, this will be it. Half angle formula for the sign. That's it.